Hello, 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 sellers. How are you? How are you? I'm Kathy and I'd love to be selling. Come on in. We are going to talk about, oh, are you making this colossal mistake on eBay? And sadly, I'm seeing a lot of sellers doing it. So let's nip this in the bud. Let's stop this. So come on in, come on in. Uh, those of you that watch me from my Facebook business page, I love to be selling. Thank you so, so much. I've got well over 4,000 followers now, and I so appreciate it. Um, those of you that watch on my YouTube channel, Kathy Terrell, I love to be selling. Thank you. Thank you. Over 8,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, just click subscribe. I really, really, I'm so glad to welcome all my subscribers. Um, and those of you that comment, I read all the comments on the YouTube channel and on my Facebook business page. So thank you. Thank you. And those of you that subscribe, we are over 95,000 downloads now. So thank you so much for those of you that listen on my podcast and download it. It's on Apple, iTunes, it's on um, Spotify, iHeart, Pandora, all over. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But let's talk about this colossal mistake because we need to like turn this around and turn this around quickly. Um, and sadly, I'm hearing it um, from a bunch of different people sharing expertise. And um, I'm also watching new sellers fall into this error and also more experienced sellers. And this is it. eBay selling is not one size fits all. So colossal mistake number one is to think that because so-and-so shares it and so-and-so is a highly successful seller, that it is the answer, the only answer, and that you must do it, okay? Now, what we all must do is follow the rules and regulations on eBay. But honestly, everything else is pretty much up for grabs. It is going to depend on what your lifestyle is, how many hours you have to put into your eBay selling. It will depend on where you live in the United States and will also depend a lot on your physical setup. Okay. So colossal mistake number one is to think that if I do, you know, if I absolutely follow what this person says, um, that this will absolutely guarantee um, successful eBay selling for me. And it might not, because again, your circumstances and everything are different. For instance, sourcing. I see an enormous amount of people doing sourcing videos um, on all the channels. You can tune in and watch people going up and down the aisles of all kinds of thrift stores and retail stores and estate sales. And I think it's great. You get a lot of really great ideas, but everybody's different. You may not have access to those kinds of stores. Your thrift stores might carry a very different assortment than what you're seeing. So if you enjoy watching the haul videos, this is colossal mistake number one, is what, you, what you're after is to find people that are sourcing the kind of things that you are able to source. For instance, here in New York City, I don't have a savers. We do have very large Goodwills. We do have the bins. We do have Salvation Army, okay? Um, so that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Um, there was one Goodwill I used to go to a lot, but it was very near an antique dealer. And what was happening was that dealer would be in there and grabbing all kinds of vintage stuff. So what I found was going to that Goodwill, I would source more modern things, things that that dealer would not go after. Um, so just realize where you're sourcing, who your competition is, um, and keep that in mind. And if you're going to be following people that are doing haul videos, which is great, look for people where they are, <clears throat> excuse me, they're showing off the kind of things that you can get. Like people, that I was watching somebody showing off beautiful glass, which is great. I just don't see that um, in the thrift stores and stuff that are anywhere around me, but in your area, you might. So if you see a lot of glass continually at your thrift stores, then you're going to want to follow people that are showing off a lot of glass, you know, that kind of thing. So the colossal mistake number one is, you know, find the people that are talking about the kind of things that you can put your hands on. Okay. And somebody else was sharing um, all kinds of interesting uh, musical instruments. I don't think I've ever seen a musical instrument in any of the thrifts around here. And that could be because again, in New York city, we have a lot of professional museum um, museums. We do professional musicians and they might be grabbing up that kind of thing. I don't know. But interestingly enough in New York city, I have come across a couple of times um, great halls of really cool sewing patterns. And you wouldn't think of New York City as a great place to source sewing patterns, especially unusual high ticket sorting sewing patterns. But it is because we have dressmakers and we have people that are creating costumes um, for small theaters. And they are the people, oh, great costumes, that, that 
then donated because I guess they were done with the show where they were cleaning out their workspace. Okay. And donated them. So again, it's finding what you're able to source where you are. So that's colossal mistake. Number one, because what can happen is you'll watch certain people and it's great, but it's just not anything you can source. And you sort of, I don't know about you. Sometimes I sort of get sourcing envy. Has that ever happened to you? You're like, Oh, if they only had that kind of thing around here, like the beautiful glass, they just don't. I guess New York City people just aren't glass collectors. I don't know. Um, but just keep that in mind. The other thing I was, I was listening to a couple of people, huge mistake. And this is about your physical workspace. Um, and I heard this, this was going on maybe 10 or 15 years ago. There was a huge thing going on about you're not really a professional seller unless you move your eBay out of your home and you get a workspace um, either you're moving into a storage unit or you get a warehouse space or some kind of workspace. Um, and, and so a lot of people, what they were doing was they were renting lockers or they were putting units on their property, um, all kinds of things. And, and what was happening was sometimes these people were very, very new sellers. So they were just starting to sell. And my advice to you when you're starting to sell is really live with what you have I know it might get a little cluttered, but particularly at the beginning, you really, I don't advise you to be buying units to pop in your backyard. Um, I don't advise you to be getting storage unit lockers or anything like that until you've been selling for a while and you're absolutely sure this is what you want to be doing. Um, for those of us that have been selling for a while, and I would say like after you've been selling for six months or a year, um, it's sort of like the pink bubble is worn off. <laughs> we love eBay, but it's like the pink bubble is worn off and you realize just how much work it is. You know, that you love selling, you love everything about selling or just about everything about selling. Um, but you realize that it's work. Then you take a look at, do I want to get a storage unit? Do I want to get a locker? Do I want to rent warehouse space or anything like that? And you take a look at what your income is and you figure out what is good for your budget. I will share what I did. And this was like three or four years into my selling because again, I am in a New York city apartment. So my space is restricted. And so I rented, um, a storage unit. I rented a storage unit. I, I looked at several around me. Cause again, one good thing about New York is there's a lot of storage units, um, rented one near me. It was only a 15 minute walk. Um, rented a smaller one because I wanted to try a smaller one before, you know, expanding. It did not have electricity. I know some people get units that do have electricity because they're printing. So they will be at the unit, they will print the labels, they will do their shipping at their unit and then drop the mail off. So mine was just to hold inventory. So what I would do is when I had sales for things that were in the unit, I would go down, I would pull the items, then I would bring them back to my home, pack them, ship them, they would go out the door. And it was great because I did get a lot of inventory out of my home, which was great. Um, and at the time our son was living with us so we really were restricted on space. Well, my son moved out. He got his own apartment. And I'm not kidding you. Within like two weeks of him moving out, his bedroom became my eBay office. And I completely took over before that I was running my eBay office out of our living room. Um, and what, what I found was, and this is why I say everything is unique to everybody, um, is it was 15 to 20 minutes to get to my unit. And then it was 15, 20 minutes to get back from the unit. And you have to realize too, at least for New York City, is I'm not in a car. I'm carrying. So I have a large, I don't have any IKEA bags in here, but I had a big IKEA bag. I throw everything in it. So I'm schlepping everything back and forth. And I don't mind carrying. I'm fit. I can carry stuff. But it was 40 minutes a day, because thankfully I was getting a lot of sales, that was going into going back and forth from my unit. And this is what I bring up is... When you are looking to expand, and the unit was close. I mean, I picked one that was close. When you look to expand, you're adding something on your property, okay? I am adding the storage unit. You need to factor in time. So yes, I am getting more space to store my stuff. And I'm going to assume that you did the budget. So yes, you have the budget to do it. But do I want to spend 40 minutes a day, 45 minutes a day, depending on traffic, going back and forth to a unit? What can you do in 40 minutes? I can list three to four items, maybe more, depending on how fast I'm going. 
I can do quite a bit of social media. In 40 minutes, I can definitely do a bunch of social media schedule, do reels, okay? I can do product research, okay? I could be out in a store shopping for 40 minutes, okay? So for me, 40 minutes is precious time. If it was like 10 minutes each way, I'm like 20 minutes, but, but figure it out. And so what I decided, because again, I had the spare bedroom, is I literally redid my spare bedroom. So I, I had a budget and in my spare bedroom, I have um, shelving on one wall that was created. I hired a gentleman to do shelves because I don't do shelves. I have two large bay windows. I put shelving in the bay windows. I'm looking at it. One, two, I have three shelves in each bay window. And then my husband, God bless him, um, I told him I needed floor to ceiling shelving on the back wall. It's actually behind me is all floor to ceiling shelving with bins. And so he went, um, if you don't know, my husband was a theatrical stagehand. So he's very good at like storage and stress and, you know, he's just good at storage stuff. Um, because if you don't know backstage in theaters, they store a lot of stuff. And so he picked my shelving unit, went and got it, put it up for me. It was from Home Depot. It's very, very sturdy, industrial looking shelving. And that's what I did. I recreated the space to maximize space for storage to save that 40 minutes. Nice to save the money on storage too. But for me, the time was the most precious thing because 40 minutes a day, I mean, that could be that you're, you stop work 40 minutes earlier to have time with your family. It meant everything was out of the home and that may not work for you. I've got one really good friend. She doesn't want her eBay business in the home. She wants it out of her home. And I go, you know what? Then that 40 minutes for that person is worth it. And that's the colossal mistake. Cause I might think, oh, well she's doing it. So I should do it. And I did try it. And that's the other thing. Colossal mistake is, you know, you listen to your friends, try it. You will find out if it works for you. It wasn't a huge money investment. I'm trying to think. I mean, back then, I think the unit was 60 a month, 80 a month, something like that. I mean, they're more expensive now. Um, but it was like, this is okay. I wasn't in any kind of yearly contract. That's another thing. If you sign up for any kind of paid service, find out if there's a contract, right? No contract. You can cancel at any time. I put everything in. I took everything out. Um you know, it's that kind of thing. So think it through. And when you want to try something like, you know what, I want to try a storage unit. You know, I don't want to have so much inventory in my home. And I know other people that have put up uh, pop-up uh, sheds, she sheds, he sheds um, on their property. And that has become their storage unit because they have the space. And I have another friend, um, they've since moved, but they used to live in Indiana. They actually bought their home because it had a warehouse size space on the back of the property and they stored all of their eBay and they also sold on other platforms inventory right on their property. Okay. So that's another thing to consider too, is, is there something I can do to my physical property besides taking over the garage, which a lot of sellers do um, for my inventory. Okay. So listen, but then see, and then test and test and and really you got to my storage unit I was there for 6 months you got to give it time because I don't know about you but a lot of times when you do change when you do something new I mean sometimes it's like yay new thing <laughs> and other times it's like ugh new thing so give it time to me like 90 days 6 months give it a chance cuz also you want to be doing it in rain you want to be doing it in snow if you're in the northern uh, parts of the United States of the world like we are rather than our Florida friends. And that's another thing. Is it air conditioned? Is it heated? You need to think about these things. Um, and then you make the choice and then you test it. My friend's got a unit. She loves it. She loves having everything out of her home. She thinks it is the greatest thing. I did it. I, I'll be honest. I liked it for a while. I liked it. I think like the first two or three months. And then I did not like the time especially on days where I was like a little tired. It's like, oh, I got to go. The, and, you, and you have to go. The inventory's there. Otherwise, you're going to get dinged on shipping. It's like, no, this is not good. And then for me, I decided this was not going to be a fit. And then I moved. I Again, I restructured the office. <clears throat> well, this good was everything was out of the room. Restructured it, had all the shelving built, put everything in. 
and then moved everything back. So colossal mistake is, first of all, to get out ahead of yourself, like new, new, new people is very much deal with what you have. And then as you're growing from the new phase, uh, particularly for my part-time sellers, is definitely listen to people if everybody's saying in, and this was again this was eight or nine years ago everybody was saying oh you got to move out you're not really a seller unless you move out of your home space so i was like okay i'll try this um and then i found for me it wasn't a fit and i said it publicly you know i said i think it's great for you but i prefer to work out of my home and i've got another friend um actually in colorado and she has a very large uh, multiple six-figure business and she works out of her home. But again, she's designated areas of her home where the work is, and then other areas of her home where work does not intrude. And that's what works for her. And she has workers come into her home. So again, colossal mistake is that eBay is not one size fits all. Colossal mistake is, again, we listen. We have sellers that we love to listen to, that we get a lot of great information from, but it's okay to disagree with people. It's okay to go, you know, I, 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 I love your information, but this I'm, is not a fit for me. And anybody that follows me knows that I'm always saying I am not a cookie cutter coach. I'm very much about supporting you in finding what works for your eBay selling. So when you're dealing with your physical space, whether it's a spare bedroom or several spare bedrooms, I know I was looking at one friend. She's like, uh oh, we've got company coming and my eBay stuff's in the guest bedroom and I've got a like rejigger, rejigger my eBay stuff because company's coming. Um, a lot of sellers in that position, I certainly understand. And again, my eBay room, um, when I have company coming, I have to rejigger because sometimes the company goes in my eBay room besides in our living room. So totally understand that. So colossal mistake is to think it's one size fits all or that I must do what a certain seller recommends because that's just not the case, okay? Um, this is December of 2023. Um, another colossal mistake um, before we we uh, we close is to not assess what's going on in your business. So first one is to think it's one size fits all, then to just whatever this person says, I'm going to do it no matter what, you know, that it's fine to test for you and to discover what works for you. And then another huge mistake that sellers can make is not assessing what is going on in their business. And assessing your selling, and this is true whether you're part-time or full-time. So assessing your business isn't about you have to make a certain dollar amount or have to put in a certain amount of hours. It's about having a business-like attitude and mindset about your eBay selling. We love it. We enjoy it. And take a look at how's it going. So the end of the year is a great time to assess and to look at the parts of your business and also how you're feeling, your goals, your aspirations about your selling. And a lot of the assessments I see out there, they're, they're really made for like a brick and mortar retail establishment that has a physical presence. Um, they're really not designed for online retailers and they're really not designed for eBay retailers. And they might just function like um, looking at sales data, which you certainly wanna look at, but they don't look at the total picture um, of your eBay selling, how it's working for you, what your goals are, your assessment, you know, how you did this year compared to previous years, how you're feeling about it, the different parts of your eBay selling. So what I've done is I've created uh, your end of year assessment for your eBay business. Um, it is a guide which you download. And it has a video that goes with it. And it's on my website right now. I'm going to show this to you. And I've created it. This is actually something I do with my members. And I'm offering it to you. Um, it's half off. And 10% of it is going to go to uh, Lorianne Wong's uh, Reflections of Trinity. I always like to donate part of the proceeds to Lorianne Wong and to help folks that are having a tough time in the Atlanta area. But definitely grab this. It's your eBay 2023 end of your seller success assessment. And again, you're going to get a downloadable um, assessment worksheet. It's going to work you through all the parts of your eBay business. And you can do it with the video. You will be done in under an hour. You can certainly go longer. You can stop the video. I also have it in audio version. So if you prefer to listen and do the worksheet listening, you can do that. So you've got video, you've got audio, you've got the worksheet, and it is half off for a short time only. And then with the assessment, this is a great thing about doing the assessment. And I walk you through 
um, the parts of your eBay business and parts you may not have thought of, okay, is then with the assessment of 2023, and you might have more success than you think because there's some things you may not be looking at that I'll be sure to point out to you. Then you move forward in 2024. So just like I said, with organizing your inventory, you have to look at what your physical space is. Same thing with our businesses. Assess like, hey, how, what is going on with 2023 for my eBay? And your eBay 2023 end of year seller success assessment will absolutely do that for you. So grab it while it's half off. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And I'm Kathy and I love to be selling. Bye-bye everybody.